Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, today we feast a Franciscan saint, Saint Anthony of Padua, confessor and doctor of the Church. Saint Anthony is one of the Franciscan saints who uh, represented uh, very well the Franciscan charism and uh, in a way incarnated it in the uh, in his uh, life, he was able to leave this charism and uh, to, uh, co to be personally completely configured to this. St. Anthony of Padua, we know, entered as uh, a young man the, a monastery in Coimbra in Portugal. He was originally from Portugal and uh, he joined the canon regula uh, of the, mon the monastery of the canons regular of St. Augustine. But the inspiration to join the Franciscan order came to him when the corpses of the five first Franciscan martyrs in Morocco came back to Coimbra to that city where the Franciscans had settled before and had a hermitage. That uh, inspiration of, that, that the desire of martyrdom uh, was inspiring himself to live such a great life, a missionary life for the sake of the gospel. He used to be in a monastery but inspired by this example of the first Franciscan martyrs, martyred by the Muslims, he wanted also to join the friars and to live such a heroic uh, way of life. Uh, he entered the friars in Coimbra and then wanted to imitate the example of this first uh, martyrs, wanted to go himself to preach the gospel to the Saracens. And uh, once he set out towards to go on a journey to preach the gospel to Morocco as well, because of a shipwreck wreck, and uh, because of the strong wind, his uh, ship leading him to uh, Morocco was uh, taken uh, to the coast of Sicily. And, uh, uh, the journey was interrupted by this uh, uh, calamity. So he had to, uh, to, to be in Sicily and uh, to land in, this, uh, in Italy. And from Sicily, he was able to go to Assisi, where St. Francis was present with the first, uh, during the first general chapter called by St. Francis. And at that time, there were already 5,000 friars gathered from all over the world to celebrate this first general meeting together. The opportunity was uh, given to St. Anthony at that time to meet personally St. Francis of Assisi. But, uh, no one knew about his uh, great skill as a theologian, as a priest, as a preacher. So he was assigned to a hermitage in uh, Emilia-Romagna, in one of the regions in Italy, in a very solitary place where he spent his time in praying, in doing all humble jobs inside the friary, a new one. Uh, uh, no one knew about, about his uh, talents. But the occasion came for 
him to be revealed as a great uh, preacher when the superior asked him to preach during an ordination of Dominican friars and uh, no one was uh, available to preach. The superior himself had to give the homily, but he wasn't around. So St. Anthony was asked to supply and uh, to preach. And in that homily, uh, caught up by the Holy Spirit and inspired by the Holy Spirit, he was able to deliver a splendid sermon. And that was the occasion when all friars and the superiors knew about this great man. So from that moment he was given the office of preacher and especially the office of professor of theology. Among the writings of St. Francis there is a letter written to him, addressed to him personally by St. Francis, in which the Holy Patriarch of Assisi praised the great skill of a theologian of St. Anthony of Padua, saying, I encourage you to, to, to teach theology to our friars. And St. Francis addresses St. Anthony as my bishop, acknowledging his great talent, theological talent. But, St. Francis added, uh, make sure that the friars in learning theology and you in teaching do not give up what is more important, the spirit of prayer. To do everything in the spirit of prayer and contemplation. St. Francis was very keen on study, on theology, as long as this theology was a way to come closer to God and not merely an academic uh, effort to become uh, clever and uh, famous, famous preachers. In the Franciscan spirituality, everything has to contribute to come closer to God. Any kind of work, even the most humble one, and also the academic work, has to, uh, to contribute to reach this spirit of contemplation and to come to know the, that perfect uh, truth, which is Jesus crucified for us. St. Anthony then was praised and he officially began to be the theologian of the Franciscan, Franciscan order. And we can understand that uh, almost all the friars, those living in Italy, were formed by this great saint. St. Anthony of Padua had such a great memory to remember literally by heart the Bible. There was a, a, a saying at his time, it was believed that if the Bible and all the Bibles in the world had gone lost, St. Anthony with his memory, his knowledge of the Bible, could write it again from scratch. He was then defined by the Pope, the Ark of the Testament, for the reason that he had such a great knowledge of the Bible, to know the Bible by heart, almost all the Bible by heart. And also, St. Anthony of Padua was uh, called the hammer of the heretics, because of this great knowledge, and especially a great love for Jesus Christ. When he preached, he could always defeat all errors going on. And also, he was able with his zeal to inflame the people with the love of Christ. In his sermons shined uh, both a great knowledge and a great charity for Christ and for all souls to be saved. The writings, there are many writings of St. Anthony which are indeed a mine of knowledge 
wisdom and uh, love for the Church, for Christ. I said at the beginning of this uh, sermon that St. Anthony uh, incarnate in his life the, the great example of Franciscan life. And the Franciscan life is summarized in being completely conformed to Jesus and to Jesus crucified. So the more we come into this mystery with our knowledge, with our love, with all our sentiments, the more we become wise, the more we get that, uh, that great skill, which means uh, finally to be, to be holy and uh, to be completely uh, uh, absorbed by the love of Christ. And this, this was his mission, to become holy, to become another Christ, following St. Francis and imitating the great patriarch of the poor, St. Francis of Assisi. Let us turn to St. Anthony of Padua and uh, uh, in order to ask him, especially one grace, the grace to imitate his love for Jesus, his zeal for the truth. Uh, if you go to Padua, where his uh, body is uh, uh, kept in, in, in the basilica dedicated to him, you see that one of the, mo of the main relics is his tongue, which is incorrupt. The tongue, a symbol of the person, the tongue that preached uh, lots and lots of sermons. That tongue is an expression of his love for Jesus, his zeal for evangelizing everyone and for defeating all errors, trying to undermine the gospel of Christ. Let us ask St. Anthony for this grace, to be inflamed by the same love for Christ and for the Church. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.